everyone, my name is Zach Redrup, this is the It's Not A Face podcast, and on this episode I'm joined by Amelia Clark, who is a radio host over at Kerrang Radio. We talk about how she got involved at Kerrang Radio, her work as a freelance presenter and content creator, the importance of networking and resilience when pitching, tips for generating ideas for pitches, skills that you need to follow a similar career path, her love for all things horror, and loads more. Now, if you enjoyed this or any other episode of the podcast and you want to show your support, there's a few ways that you can do that. Number one, leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. It takes just a few seconds and it really does help. Number two, share this on your social media, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Or number three, if you want to go the extra mile, you can pay a little bit each month to join the Patreon and in return you'll get access to episodes early along with some other perks. Or you can pick up some merch from the store. All the links to that and the podcast socials where you can follow us can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's itsnotaphase.co.uk. And now with all that out of the way, let's jump right into this week's episode of It's Not A Phase. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me on this episode of It's Not A Phase, where I'm joined by Amelia Clark, who is a radio host for Kerrang! Radio. How's it going? Hello. It's going good. How are you? All good. All good. Like you were just saying before. Survived the heat wave, so I can mark myself safe. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, here I am chatting to you. Yeah, like like I was saying before, the heat wave might return when we least <laughs> expect it. It's just going to creep on in, like sleepless nights, bugs everywhere. The spiders have been loving it; it's been horrible. So yeah, hopefully it has ended. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably wake up to it on Christmas Day. You know, just sweltering heat. You know, yeah, yeah, degrees, something like that. Just like the pavements melting, like <laughs> pretty much. Oh, it's back. <laughs> Obviously, you're a uh, radio host. And before we kind of get into how you got into that role, I just want to take, you know, a few steps back into your kind of musical upbringing. So what bands were you were you into when you were younger that kind of, you know, pushed you towards thinking, you know what, I want to get involved in the industry myself? Oh, my gosh. Like I was listening to Slipknot. Then like System of a Down, but my my awakening was Toxicity because that album's just obviously amazing. But then I remember queuing up outside HMV for like Mesmerize and Hypnotize, and those mm. two albums I listened to on repeat. <laughs> like I really wanted to be a singer back in the day as well, so it was like your Evanescence because I thought I was like, girl, I can sing like Amy Lee. <laughs> I, c- I couldn't but yeah like evanescence kill such engage like ginger escape plan like all, all of those bands and then it was also like Brody dell from freaking distillers and i was like oh my god she's so badass like all these bands you know then like obviously when it comes to representation of people that look like me it was skin from skunk and nancy who's jamaican and nancy is um a folklore, a Nancy the Spider. It's like right. a story I was told when I was younger. So the fact that it was to do with like Jamaican culture as well, I was like, oh my God, it's Nancy the Spider, so cool. So yeah, just all those bands, many more I can name, but those were the first ones I loved. And then like a little bit like, like your Fallout Boys, your Panic at the Discos, all that as well. But yeah, those were the first bands I was like, wow, okay, yeah. this music's awesome. <laughs> do you remember what your first album was that you bought? Because you know, back when people used to buy albums <laughs> yeah yeah back when albums were a thing yeah, yeah. Last album my ball oh my gosh it must have been it probably was toxicity or no no it was to- i would say strongly it was toxicity yeah but i used to like there's a rapper called dmx and he yeah. is also just really rageful and he had this album called it's dark and hell is hot and on the front, he's just like drenched in blood. And I remember seeing that as well in HMV, just being like, I don't even know what this type of music is really, but that is so bad. <laughs> so also that album has like a massive, massive soft spot in my heart. Like that album was, yeah, amazing. From the sheer visuals alone. <laughs> well, back then, you know, you had to, that's kind of what you kind of went off to yeah. think, well, you know, I might like that album because there's someone literally drenched in blood. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're like, this seems like it's a bit of me. I don't know why, but I need to I need to hold this and I need this to be in my house and listen to it. Yeah. I think mine one was um, Alien Ant Farm Anthology, which was... Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A classic, yeah. Um, Such a good album. I don't really like movies. The song movies just, just annoys me now. <laughs> But like there was the song that I can't remember it's called, but it was on like the Tony Hawk games, and that kind of you know the Tony Hawk games kind of introduced me into yeah, of that kind of music as well. Yeah, I didn't know from one of those bands that yeah movies and like the um, Smooth Criminal, like yeah. whatever, like all those big big tunes. But 
the, the album songs were also bangers, but I feel like people didn't pay attention to them because yeah. they were stuck on movies and smooth. It's like, ah, oh, but there's there's so many other bangers that you should listen to. But movies was great. It's just from the sheer video alone. It was video great. was great. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll come so that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at what point did you then like start making moves to think, you know, I want to take myself into a career in, in music? When did that kind of begin? Oh my gosh. I was actually thinking about this. It's it was like a long time coming. So even at school, because um I'm dyslexic and back back in the day, you used to get given um, a dictaphone to like record classes and stuff like that. Right. So I had a dictaphone. But of course, me being me, I'd just be doing radio shows on the dictaphone all the time. <laughs> like, hello, we're coming in from blah blah school. It's Amelia. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I'd just like annoy all my mates and just yeah, be loud like I am. But then I kind of, I really wanted to be a singer for ages. So I kind of went towards that and went to music school in the full on hopes of being a singer. But then when I really thought about it, I was like, I don't really like singing on stage. I like all the shit that happens behind stage. Like that's, that's what I like. I love talking to people. I love um, like announcing people, getting to know people's stories. I was like, that's, that's what I like. But I didn't really take it seriously. And then obviously, when you become an adult, you got to pay rent and you got to pay bills. Responsibilities. Yeah, those responsibilities creep up, dude. You're like, okay, crap, how am I going to do this? So I have worked, me and my fiance joke, because I've done every single job (laughs) that you can think of, every job, just to try to make things work. Like I've worked at Build-A-Bear, which was fun. Right. I love build, building a friend for you and me. It was fun. <laughs> then I've worked in burger vans, worked at Topshop, worked at New Lot. I've worked everywhere, but nothing really stuck. And I never really knew why. Could have been the ADHD and the autism, but who knows? <laughs> um, but nothing really stuck. So then I started to get work in the music industry. So in Brighton, I worked for a few independent small labels. Really, really liked that. But still, it wasn't really it. I was like, mm. it's just, it's not it. And um, like I said, at school and stuff, I always kind of wanted to do presenting. But again, I don't know if it was like I didn't see people that looked like me or I just thought it was super duper unobtainable. And it was just like, oh, that stuff doesn't happen to people like me. Oh, well, let's do something else. You know, here, burger vans are really fun to work in. Like, I don't, I don't know. So just it was like a little dream in the back of my head that I didn't really like fixate on. Then I started working for a very popular guitar brand. I won't say, but you can guess what it is. Started working for them in marketing. Absolutely loved it. It was great. But then again, it was like the creative bone that I had wasn't really being met. Like, you know, then, yeah, I during COVID or actually before COVID, me and my fiance started a podcast because he was like, look, if you want to start like doing stuff, let's just start a podcast. It's really fun. So we spoke about new music and horror films, obviously. Um, Yeah. Then from that, I started doing community radio. Then obviously COVID happened, but I was still just doing community radio and just literally recording myself over and over. Then, uh, mm, I, and then I here I am. It's, <laughs> dude, it's weird. Like I um, was really unhappy, really depressed. And um, I, I won't get into it too much because it'll be really, like it'll be such a downer. But when I was in college, um, one of my best friends committed suicide. Right. And um She was so bright, so intelligent, so fun and so talented. And while I was thinking about what do I want to do, I was like, I've always wanted to do presenting. And some people, even though they're amazing and talented and absolutely sick, they don't they don't go for it. So I was like, I should just go for it. You know? Yeah. You've got to take a stab at things like even if you try and you you don't succeed, at least you're not going to kick yourself how many years down the line saying, you know what? I didn't even try. I could have tried. And who knows where I could have ended up now? And yeah. let's say worst comes to worst, you try and you and you don't get the kind of position that you want. At least you can say, you know, I've given it a go, and you're in the same position you were if you didn't try. So That's nothing it. to lose, dude. You got to be in that care home in like how many years time with some stories to tell, man. Like you yeah. have to have some stories to tell. And you're completely right. If you go for it and it doesn't work out, at least you went for it. Yeah. If not, you never know, right? Yeah. And it's just unfortunate that you know. I think people kind of get lose their like confidence because of the way that the music industry is just so competitive and i think that's what doesn't really help because you could apply for 20 30 40 more jobs and you don't get anything but you just need that one break to get your foot through the door i think Mm -hmm. like i um i found my old laptop ages ago and my emails came up 
And I still don't know how I did it, but my emails was like, like backwards from like, does that make sense? As in like from, from oldest to newest as opposed to newest oldest to oldest. Oldest to newest. Yes. That is it. <laughs> and literally it was mad. And to be honest, it really, really did like spin my head out a little bit, but it was just loads of attachments of me being like, hi, my name's Amelia. Hi, my name's Amelia. Hi, my loads like in in the in the thousands and that's not I'm not even over, I'm not over exaggerating it was crazy for years and I looked at some of those emails and no wonder I didn't get any responses because y- your girl couldn't write an email because my spelling's <laughs> awful it was awful but um it's the hustle mentality I suppose which yeah. is a really shitty thing to say but I was like I've literally been trying to do something within music or presenting or marketing for somewhere cool like drop dead or something for for mm. years but I wasn't really going about it the right way you know so yeah you just have to try yeah and sometimes it's a matter of trial and error like as long as if you do make a mistake as long as you learn from it then you've not it's not gone to waste like it's not it a mistake is a mistake yeah, that's it. That's it. I yeah. mean, it can get a bit like, oh, why is this happening? What am I doing? And my dad always says to me, it's it's okay if you have like low days. Just don't stay there. It's it's mm. cool. Everyone gets low. It's it's we are but mere humans. Just don't stay in the lowness. Yeah. Which is hard, but yeah. Just gotta work through it sometimes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you did do uh, like music in some degree in in university or college then. I did indeed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh god, so do- so basically, I've been to uni three times, and the first time I went to uni because um, my mom works in mental health, and um, she was like, "You'd make a really good psychiatrist," but I didn't really want to do that. But um, I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll do psychiatry and and music. Awesome!" Yeah. So I went to um, I found this uni in Birmingham, and on my first day I was kind of like in the music class and everyone was going around the room saying what they wanted to do and it's like yeah I really like music therapy oh yeah I really like using music to aid people and like the human condition and I was like I want to be a rock star what's everyone talking about like what I was like what no I, I literally want to play download like what's going on yeah, a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I was like what what is this <laughs> then later on I found out I'd actually applied for a teacher's training uni but I had right. that- I didn't know so I was like oh god so I ended up being there for a year getting some qualification then after that moved to London went to a place called tech music schools which isn't around anymore went there did vocals then left there because I couldn't get onto the degree because my music theory was so bad I just I couldn't get a grasp of it and Mm. They kept being like, we really like you, but you need to get your music theory. You need to pass this exam. And I was like, I just, so I kept doing it, doing it, doing it. Then it came, to, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say, like it came to the point where they were like, okay, we have to now start charging you to keep resetting this exam. <laughs> I was like, okay, let me just, it'll be fine. I'll just, I, I can't do it. I, I mm. can't do it. Then I went to a place that most people know called BIM in BIM, Brighton. Yep. Good old BIM. Then yeah, then it was there for three years, but it was um in the first year I was like I don't think this is for me right. like those feelings kept creeping up of like because I used to do a bit of promoting while I was at BIM of like bands playing in um, a local bar and I was like this is the promoting side and the getting to know the band side is far more fun for me than getting on stage and bursting out a few pipes I was like no I I, <laughs> I like the talking to people the yeah. arranging like that's yeah that was it right. so do you think that you know going into education for music that kind of benefited you because I guess for some people they don't even do that they just kind of go straight into it in terms of work experience or internships or anything like that Fab, all I got out of <laughs> like no no cussing for BIM but all I got out of that was like some lifelong friends and a fiance. <laughs> to, be, to be completely honest with you, that's pretty good. Dude. That's that's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not bad odds. Yeah, but, um, it was great in terms of um, networking and meeting people. But in terms of opportunity, it's really weird because I've been to two music schools, and one of them, I won't say which one, was really good for like opportunities and giving you people's email addresses to contact and inviting people into the uni that would be good to talk to. And the other one, none of that happened. So 
I think that nowadays as well, with there's, there's things like TikTok and you can make a small following for yourself or you can literally, if you if you know how, find anyone's email online and just introduce yourself to places like LinkedIn. So it, it, it's hard. I think me now, I probably wouldn't have gone to music uni because, yeah, no. It's not for everyone. It's it's really not for everyone, and that and that's okay. Yeah. Like twenty twenty is a beautiful thing. Like I think now that everything seems a lot more accessible. Like back in the day, we used to think the only way you can make it as a musician or any type of like media is to be in London, and that that were it. Like but yeah. I'm in Birmingham, right? And but th- that's that's not the case anymore. But that used to be the hub of everything. Like you need to be in London to do anything. But now. That's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Like when I went to uni, I thought everything was in London. And it just seems like over time things have become more and more, you know, dotted about the country. I mean, London is still the main place for it, but oh yeah. It's not the the only answer now. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, still a lot of my jobs, like 90% of my jobs are in London still, but mm. I mean that you don't have to be playing a gig in London to get someone's attention you can make a really cool demo you can make a really cool EPK you can do all these things like day-to-day managers and A&Rs they travel now they don't just stay in London there's regional A&Rs that are dotted around the country you know so yeah there's there's some things to do not all things are in London (laughs) yeah you talk about like how education you didn't get much out of like um BIM in terms of getting into your career path and stuff like that when I was in uni back in the day uh, <laughs> they, they made me they made me learn shorthand you, you know what shorthand is oh yeah yeah like yeah people tried to do that with me for, for dyslexia as well like yeah 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 so to, to kind of pass the course I had to learn how to do 60 words a minute what did you study music journalism really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I've never used it once since that course, so it oh, shows yeah. how. Yeah, Jeez. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you a single kind of like word that's just a symbol now. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you any of them. Yeah, and isn't that mad? Like what you retain because at BIM, I had a really good music theory teacher that just literally was like, "Look, da 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 da," and I was just like, "Why did no one tell me that? That's so much easier for me to like understand." Yeah, but now I couldn't recite the circle of fifths i couldn't talk about the dorian scale i couldn't do any of that <laughs> now but um but yeah i it was all completely embedded you know yeah. i could like notation i could listen to like last serenade for like for example i could notate everything out like but yeah i, I can't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's really sad it was so cool but yeah the, the things you retain from these courses i mean i guess with me when i went to bim I was kind of like falling out of love with singing anyway. Hmm. So during the course, um, again, very, very long, and I don't want to be too like, but um, I had gallstones in my first year, which suck. Not (laughs) ideal. Not (laughs) ideal. (laughs) So um, I had to have an operation in my, going into my second year, leaving my first year. So I was really, really ill. And while I was kind of like, so I came back to Birmingham for the operation and then I was, just, I was like, I'm not really feeling like I want to get back and go on stage. I want to get back and like chill with people. Yeah. So yeah, that gave me a lot of time to think as well. So was it the, you said you did like the kind of like a podcast with your fiance. Did that kind of, you kind of use that to kind of propel yourself in terms of like a portfolio kind of thing of you presenting and stuff? Is that what you kind of used it for? Yeah, yeah. It, it's It's so strange because even before we did our podcast which we still want to get back into it's just time to do stuff now but um even before that I was doing like music news with a place called Global Sound Group so that used to go up every I think it was Thursday or Friday that's just a guy I emailed it was like a really shit music blog and I was right. like oh you should have like a presenter just like saying oh Ed Sheeran's playing Glastonbury this whatever like that, that voice you used as well yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like pop culture things like easy easy to digest like pop culture yeah things, yeah yeah which I didn't to be honest care about that much but I understood how people would find value in it then before that I was doing bits for another like YouTube channel and just trying to get some sort of not name for myself really but just like practice I guess because I've never been shy for talking. That's absolutely fine. I could talk to anyone. That's okay. 
But in terms of like a professional aspect, um, I didn't have anything. And then when I really thought about it, I was like, oh, no way, I have done a few things. It's just I've never thought about it as being worthy as being on a show reel or something, you know? Yeah. And I guess you kind of used that as, like, I say, that kind of portfolio kind of stuff. And then you sent it off to other people. And eventually someone at Kerrang Radio saw it. And then that's kind of how you got that position. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, my, I, I put together a really, a really, really crap like radio demo to, just to say I don't have, or oh, back then I didn't have any presenter friends. I didn't have any, especially radio presenter friends or people that even wanted to do presenting. I knew. Mm no one that was interested in that so it was very much me going on youtube and a freaking guy in america being like hey everyone this is how you do the perfect radio demo and i'm like <laughs> okay i'll just do it he's <laughs> like i didn't know what i was doing but i strung something together and that's how i got on community radio then just before um yeah it was just before covid they were really struggling for budget and we got this harrowing email like yeah we have to stop um i was like oh crap okay cool and the owner of the station messaged me and he said, you're actually really, really good. And I do know some of the producers at Kerrang. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. But then nothing happened. Like, I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm, yeah, that that's literally like a lifelong dream. Like Kerrang Radio is a massive part of my childhood. And even up until a few years ago, before I got on Kerrang, I still listened to Kerrang. Yeah. Um, but then what happened was I just got really annoying and I wrote down loads of people's names that um I knew that did radio and also mm. I went onto Instagram and just looked for presenters a lot of them was black presenters that like are at Kiss and like Capital like music that yeah. I don't listen to yeah but I was like from a perspective of hey can you help me out or is there anybody you know at Bauer or anything and from that I got a lot of like yeah cool let's jump on a call yeah cool I'll ring it a five yeah cool so at this point, I was still working for the guitar brand. I was working from home. I'd do my whole day job from, what did I work? T- 10 till 6. Then at 6, I'd have a call with somebody. Then I'd have another call with somebody, another call with... And I, it was just like that for months. Right. Just talking and talking and talking. Then I ended up speaking to somebody that is at Classic FM. And she was like, look, I really want to help you. Just get a demo together. Let's talk through it, which we did. Then I sent the demo off to Kerrang and the head of Kerrang was like, yeah, I, I, I don't like your demo, but um, <laughs> you sent you sent your podcast and you sound really good on the podcast. Can you do another demo that sounds like the podcast? And on the podcast, I'm like, hello, everybody. Word up, assholes. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and I was like, are, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure? And he was like, yeah, I think you are... Your demo sounds like what you think a radio presenter should sound like rather than yourself. Right. Like, okay, cool. So I did one like, um, hello, and this is it. And this is, I've got big hands and my hair is off to the side and da, 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 just being myself. And he's like, yeah, that is awesome. I really like that. So to start off with, he offered me cover. I was like, yeah, cool. I would love, I would love to do cover. That sounds amazing. Then he wrote back and he's like, actually, do, do you just want the chart show? Right. And I was like, yeah, what the charge? That would be amazing. So that's yeah, that's how it happens. And now you're on the uh, the Radio Rock chart show, and um, how does that kind of when you go into that show? Because I think it's it's just one show every Saturday, isn't it? Right. Yes. What's the general process of setting up that show and and you know presenting that? Do they kind of like obviously just give you the the songs you play through the songs, and obviously you present it in between? How does that kind of happen? Yeah. So, well, well, like you said, I do do the chart shows. That's the 10 to one, but I do a lot of cover as well. So I mostly cover Johnny Doom's show, which is completely different to my show because he's on, um, like he does Kerrang Unleashed. So the music's a lot heavier. He plays bands like Crystal Lake, like that that awesome band from Japan. That's so sick. Like a lot of more fiery metal, which I love, but that's not really my show, which is fine because I get to play some awesome tunes, some other sick music. So again, I didn't know what a link was. I didn't know what links was. I didn't know what a sell forward was. I didn't know what a music sell was. I didn't know any of that. And again, because I built up quite a nice little pool of mentors, as it were, they were the ones being like, oh, okay, so a link is when you speak in between music. And a music sell is when you're like, okay, cool. Thanks for listening. We've got loads more music coming up next, you know? Right. So I just started to learn like little bits. But um, yeah, I'm really militant, I suppose, with it. So I print off my show. <laughs> 
<laughs> every single week. And I do, I don't plan what I'm going to say. I just literally talk because that's, that's more fun. Yeah. But I yeah. do kind of write down, okay, so Palo Royale was number 17 last week and this week is number three. So I do that. Um, so that's like my prep, but everything else, I'm just, I just talk. And then on the side of doing the radio shows, you also do like present a work on a freelance basis and mm-hmm. like content creation as well. I know on like TikTok, you've got all these kind of horror film centric kind of stuff that you make. How did you kind of get into, you know, doing those kind of bits freelance as well as kind of like on the side of it? it it's, it's a hard, it's a hard question because like, I, again, I just kind of was like, I think this will make me really happy. And yeah. again, I've got one friend that's a freelance artist. She does like art and like installations and really cool stuff like that. But I was just like, basically with the um, the guitar brand I was at, it was time to go back to the office. And I had moved from Brighton to Birmingham because Brighton's pretty, but it's very expensive. So we moved and it was time to go back to the office. And the office is in London. And when I saw how much it was to commute, I was like, there's no, no way I can commute. It's too expensive. By this time, I was already at Kerrang. And luckily, because I moved back in with my mom, because I was like, we need to save. That's why now we've bought a house. But it was a lot of saving and a lot yeah. of thought. So um, luckily, to be honest, I was at my mom's house. So when it came to leaving my job and pursuing freelance stuff, um, my fiance and my mom was like, do it because a lot of my job at the guitar brand. <laughs> that's so serious saying that. <laughs> um, everyone's like, girl, we know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you're not explicitly saying it, so it's fine. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but yeah, you can probably guess. But um, a lot of my work was coming up with ideas. So they'd be like, oh, hey, so we're going to release this brand of guitars and we want to um, target this demographic of people. I'd be like, cool, well, what about like, the video game Diablo, like that would really work well with this series. They'd be like, oh, cool, what's Diablo? So I kind of turned into a bit of like an ideas generator and person. And I came up with a really, really, really big idea. And I did all the background to like for it and all that stuff. And yeah. it went all the way to the top of the business because everyone really, really liked it. And then it kind of didn't become my idea anymore. It just kind of like went off. And I was like, hey, what's happening with my idea? So when it came to like, being freelance I was like I'm already a ideas person and I think with people that want to go into freelance like music journalism or presenting even or whatever a lot of the skills that you have you already possess but you haven't thought about it as a skill you just thought about it as a thing that you just do yeah it's a skill you know so I just I wrote down all the things that I like and that was it I was like obviously I like rock and metal but I also am a massive gamer. I love gaming. I love obviously horror films. It's like a massive part of my thing. And I also love cartoons. Like I will sit and watch the Animaniacs and Ren and Stimpy for a day. Like, <laughs> I love like old school cartoons. So I was like, okay, those are the areas that I really, those are things I really like. And I'd love to do different things in each of those areas. So part of my like neurodiversity, I suppose, or I quite like a bit of a superpower is obsessive thinking. <laughs> Right, <laughs> which sounds horrible, but um, I kind of got really locked on to different things I could do in each of these little kind of like little things. So I was like, okay, for doing my horror stuff, I own loads of films. I know loads about films, like Chester Bennington, for example. Like, how was he in Saw three D? Like, how did that happen? And there's such a parallel between like all these things I like and also the rock and metal community. Yes. Yeah. Like horror and rock and metal, just it's just it goes together. Yes. So I was like the kind of following, if you will, that I, I don't really have, but the people that would like my me talking about rock music would probably like me talking about horror as well. So um again, I just thought, what companies are around? Not fest, awesome, slipknot's media company. Let me research them. They don't talk about horror films, they definitely should. I should do that for them. Yeah. So after going on LinkedIn, researching the person I need to speak to, I was just like, hey, I would love to do horror content for you. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, then the same with Comic-Con. I was just like, I, because there's Comic-Con in Birmingham, then it's twice in London. And I was like, I would love, to, I, I want to host Comic-Con. It would be sick. So then 
again, researched the person I needed, reached out to them. So yeah, it, it's a lot of, when I talk to my friends about like pitching and trying to do stuff, obviously there's a lot of horror stories from like the good. Like I hmm. send out loads of pitches and maybe like 10 a, 10 a day and that's not an exaggeration. And I'll probably get like a response or two responses. Yeah, you know? yeah, if you're lucky. Because that's just the way it is sometimes. Yeah, yeah, if you're lucky. And bloody hell, like, yeah, sometimes it does get really like, blur. But um, as long as you, as long as your brain can keep coming up with ideas and things to do, and like, okay, that didn't work. What about this? Or ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes, if I think of like a, an idea to create some content and stuff, I have to kind of put it in my notes on my phone because then I know I'll forget it later, and then I can just come back to it. And I've got kind of like this list of of things that I can do. Some of it works, some of it doesn't, but yeah, it, it's there as like a kind of stockpile, I guess, like a batch of different stuff I can do. That's it. Like I've got like I'm just looking at them now, sticky notes all over my room, loads of blooming notebooks and all this stuff. Like I bought a Nightmare Before Christmas notebook that I wrote in once and I was like, no, Jack's face is on the front. It's too pretty to write in. I can't <laughs> do anymore. Um <laughs> but yeah, it's I think with doing like TikTok and stuff like that, I've got I think 14k. So yeah, I'm starting to really like it and all that, but the following is secondary because you you have to like doing the videos first. Yeah. Like if you do a video and you get like, I don't know, 10 likes on it, you're like, okay, cool. Who cares? Because that was fun as fuck to do. Like yeah. I really enjoyed doing that. You know, you've got to like it first off. And then if you do build a bit of a following or something, awesome. That's great. That That's cool. That, that should be secondary. And that's kind of what I've adopted. I'm like, I, I just like talking about music and horror films like that's the first and foremost what it is yeah and like you say the those two interests do like interweave like even if you look at a band like ice nine kills like they interweave it so, so much absolutely yeah and they are like the poster kids if you will like post that they are the like horror and music peoples like yeah. even to their stage shows like the dressing up getting like laurie strode to come out dressed up and uh, the, 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 i love i love ice nine so much i love yeah. them so much and like bands like ghost and creeper and you know all these other bands slipknot even that really incorporate this like macabre nature to them it's in weaved it's wefted through rock and metal yeah. Ozzy Osbourne biting the head of a bat like being absolutely out of his face like it's this macabre. It's yeah. twisted. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say if someone is interested in going to, you know, radio hosting or presenting and, and you know, the stuff that you do, what kind of skills would they kind of need to have or or build upon and, and hone on to, to you know, follow a, a similar path to you? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I think the main thing would be resilience, which, which sounds so <laughs> resilient, but um, it's the ability, like we said, to not hear back from people and get knocked down and just keep going. Like if you believe you're good at something, you're good at something. And that comes after years of maybe like, imp I still get imposter syndrome. I could walk into the press area of that download and be like, I'm not meant to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> meant to be here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, um, and that's fine because we, again, like I said before, we, we are humans, like those thoughts happen, but it's having the ability to combat the thoughts and keep going. But I think as well, another thing that has helped me is if people are already doing the thing that you want to do, who gives a shit? Just, just do it to the best of your ability. Like there's so many, say if you want to do presenting for like cars or something, there's probably loads. It's not obviously something I'm interested in because the only car I know is like a Ford and a Tesla. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> as long as you want to do it and you're knowledgeable about that, then just go for it. Like it doesn't matter how many people are doing something. And I think the other thing that's really helped me is um, the ability to think outside the box. Because if you want to do music, absolutely cool. But what about like, what about the brands like off music to this? I work with Killstar here and there. What about Killstar? How how do the artists dress themselves? What about like the TMs? Have you ever interviewed like tour managers and seen how they did things? Or it's like all the little bits off your actual, it's like mind mapping. Yeah. You have, I want to present music in the middle and then all the things that you can do off that and try to target those things as well because those are the more niche things that people probably haven't thought about. I think a lot of it as well is kind of like putting your your foot out there and your face out there like networking i know some people aren't don't like networking aren't very good at it, like but 
you've got to kind of put if people don't know who you are then how can they you know pick you to do x y or z and yeah. like you say reaching out on linkedin or just doing a little bit of research to find out who these people are and just saying hey this is what i do would you be interested in whatever i it is that i do it's just so important just putting your face out there like i say that, that's it a million percent i mean I'm the worst for it. Like I, I really don't like Instagram. I never have liked Instagram. I, I'm not one to like really. And, and if you do look at my Instagram, I have horror films all the all the way down like one of my columns. It's just me posting my like horror collection. Right. And the reason I thought of that was I don't know what to post half the time. So if I know every two pictures, the third has to be a horror film to make my beautiful column, <laughs> then that's something that I can keep incorporating and it's less for me to think about, right? Yeah, yeah. But then with NotFest, I have to post my NotFest content content on my Instagram. So that's great. That's another thing to post on there. But I've never really taken Instagram seriously or anything because it's not really a platform that I ever gravitated towards. Yeah, but yeah. TikTok is great. I could be my li- weird little self over there. <laughs> I think as well, another thing to think about is if you want to do something and nobody in your friend circle does that thing, just just do it anyway. Don't care about what people think or that it might be a little bit weird or it might be a bit cringy or whatever, because I did have a massive like, I don't want to share anything on social media because what if like blah, blah from school sees like years ago, you know, because you do unfortunately see the same people like watching your stories and things like that, but never really talking to you, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you've been like kind of lurking and, and watching yeah, you like, for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think they're called like ghost watchers. Like, yeah. Just, like, watch, like, hmm, what are you doing? Just try to ignore them and keep going because what's cringy to you or like cringy to them is not cringy to you and you know what you're doing. So even if you want to be a presenter and you haven't got anything like no – you've never done presenting before or whatever, maybe interview your friends, interview your mom and your dad, like interview your freaking cat, go to the neighbours, go to the shops, go to like um, the ball ring centre and just be like, hey, I want to talk to people about what they're doing today or like, oh, you know, let's talk to people about the heat, let's see what people are doing about the heat. It's anything just to get comfortable and one thing I was saying to a friend that wants to, someone that's become a friend that wants to be a presenter is not everything needs to be posted online. Do it for yourself watch it back, get used to hearing your voice back because some people really don't like that. So yeah. get used to hearing your voice, get used to seeing yourself on a camera, on a screen, and it doesn't need to be posted anywhere. Just just do it. Yeah, that's it. Like, I'm I'm obviously doing a podcast. I hate my voice personally, but it's fine. Like, like voice. No. Yeah, dude, you've got a no. great voice. But yeah, another thing that people should do as well is when they are pitching, try and make it personable because... Because before, before I did this podcast, I used to do um, like a website called Dead Press. And um, I used to read Dead Press. Did you? Yeah. That was, that was me. Dead Press is fantastic. No way. No. Nice. Yeah. But there were so many times when people would email me and either get my name wrong or they'd say, hey, we're a, I don't know, electro funk band and we want to be covered on here. It's like, as great as you might be, this isn't the kind of stuff that we cover. So kind of do your research and don't just kind of blanket email people. Oh, yes. Yeah. And one of the record labels I worked at in Brighton, won't name it, but it was um, it was a really crap experience. It wasn't very nice. Yeah. But the owner of the record label would come in every now and again and like have little chats with me. And one of the bits of information or like nuggets of like tips she gave me hmm. was if you're emailing somebody, always say something on the website so for example dead press oh hey dead press like i really like your cover on um 20 years or whatever of duality by slipknot that was re- it's definitely more than 20 years but yeah. that was really <laughs> <laughs> that was really really cool i also am a really big fan of that song anyway so like always highlight something because if you open an email that's what the person's going to gravitate towards like oh yeah i did do that cool oh that's really nice what they're saying you know and yeah when I was reaching out to bands at this record label and like for sync opportunities and like, oh, do you want to, to be in like Hollyoaks or whatever? They'd always respond. Yeah. They'd get back like, oh, I really like the tune that you did, like the um, stripped down version of Blah Blah on Spotify is really cool. I knew that nobody had listened to that, but I researched <laughs> and found it. So yeah. Like, oh crap, someone listened to the stripped down version of Blah Blah Blah. Awesome. You know? 
Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like say, just make things personable because people respond to that. Yeah. 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 The amount of times train line has emailed me like, hello, Mr. Clark. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time I'm like ah! but yeah it's just that's something different obviously but it's just yeah take some time and just like research and talk to the person because 10 nine times out of 10 everyone's nice right yeah. most people are friendly so not not everyone's nice but most people are friendly and if you in my experience if you ask people for help they're probably going to want to help you yeah it's just ask and if not absolutely cool just find somebody else keep it pushing it's fine yeah. Definitely. So what's your favorite thing about what you do? It's probably that I can just be myself, which is really, I guess you kind of take it for granted. But in a lot of places I've worked, you have to have kind of like a work persona of yourself. Yeah. Which is, you know, being more like subdued, being more quiet. Like if you're in an office, you can't, I can't be like, hey, everybody, yeah, which I have done in offices before and I've been told very swiftly to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's being the ability to be yourself, then knowing that you get opportunities for just being yourself. It's really nice. And um, as well, it's the ability to free think and to talk to a company or a brand and be like, hey, have you thought about doing this? Because when I worked in marketing, that was something that I really enjoyed, like idea generation. But you get to do idea generation for yourself. It's yeah. all stuff that you, at the end of the day, will be hosting or implementing or recording or whatever yourself. So I really do enjoy that. But um, yeah. yeah, those things. Then also it's the events. So obviously Comic-Con is just sick. Download is sick. So yeah, also the events and the lead up to those events is, is really yeah. cool. And what would you say is kind of the, I guess, biggest surprise part of what you do that when people, you know, you talk, talk to people about what you actually do, they're like, really, is that is that part of this job, part of being a host and a presenter and yeah. anything like that? Um, I would say what I didn't even think about in my small mind was the admin. It's mad. <laughs> it's, it's, mad. <laughs> it's mad because, yeah, it, it's taxes. It's uh, luckily the friend I mentioned before, knew how to do taxes so we sat in the library and she's like okay this is how you do your taxes I was like oh my god but it was that and recording your taxes recording how much you've been paid putting money away to pay your taxes yeah also admin so you do get peaks and troughs so like really really busy times and obviously because we're coming towards Halloween I'm coming into a bit of a busy time for what I do yeah um but you do also get like little dips in times where you're like okay cool so something really that I'm starting to implement now to be honest with you because I haven't because when I started to earn money from the jobs I've done I was like hey I'm booking Disneyland this is amazing but then you have to think about putting money away for the times that would be a bit dippy so yeah. okay um start of the year like if you're ill if you can't work because of x y and z you have to have a bit of a fail safe or a buffer to keep so you can still pay your rent pay them bills i wear contact lenses how am i going to pay my contacts i can't bloody see i need them or your mortgage or whatever um you have to have a buffer which i didn't even think about at yeah. all cool and um in terms of the future for yourself what are you kind of envisioning what is it that you want to do i guess we're not out sound wanting to sound like a job interview like five years <laughs> from now. Where, where are you where are you wanting to be over the next five years <laughs> i think that well, at the moment, it's it's kind of weird because unless I'm doing like an event or like Comic Con or down, like I said, those those things like that, or I just did a Street Fighter Six tournament, which was awesome. That was like some content creationy bits. But unless anything like that's happening, I am at home, which can get super duper lonely for somebody that's like quite not vivacious. That's not the word, but like talkative and blah blah. Like I love people, so. I would like to book more things outside of the house. So content creation and all that, that is really, really cool doing that home. But more events would be awesome. I really, really, really want to start doing more things in the horror space. And I'm having a lot of really interesting conversations at the moment, which is very, very, very good. But yeah, I, I think as well, taking like social media more seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then one of the main things I want to do that I haven't really dived into yet, I've done a little bit of voice acting, but I really want to do 
like cartoon voice acting because I make a lot of weird noises. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh, I really want to do that. And I've done a few bits here and there, but I haven't really been focusing on it just yet. But yeah, I, I think, like I said at the start of the podcast, like those kind of main areas I like. So your video games, your rock and metal, your horror and cartoony stuff. Like I just want to keep doing things in all those four areas. So yeah. I did a bit of um, game casting, which is not to sound like, oh, it's this, but um, I personally didn't know what this was. Right. So casting is basically like football commentary for video games. So for tournaments, somebody would be like, oh, and this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, blah, blah, blah. And um, I did that. I did one job at home and one job actually on site at Guild, which is Dave Beckham's esports company. Right, okay. And it was so fun. I was like, this is absolutely awesome so i definitely want to get more into doing that and also just hosting game tournaments and things because uh right. yeah so so fun cool and you know being a, a horror fanatic how are you feeling about sort x coming out <laughs> well i might be doing something quite fun to do with sort x cool um but yeah i'm, I'm so stoked i'm so yeah. stoked i'm so stoked but um the 29th of September is my dad's 70th birthday. And that's when the film comes out. Right. I was like, Dad, you know what? It's really selfish that you did that to me. You were born on that day, of all days. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? You had 365 <laughs> other days, well, 64 other days to pick from, and you picked that one. <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm probably going to see it like whenever, but very, very, very excited. I'm a massive Tone Bell fan. I think he's absolutely insane. He's, he's so sick. And um, like I said, my mom works in like mental health and she is not a fan of horror at all. She hates gore, all that stuff, but she can really get into the minor jigsaw. She's like, oh, oh, okay. And oh, oh right. I see. Oh, I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's more than just gore. Like if you really get into the lore of Saw, it's so fascinating. Absolutely yeah. love it. How did she feel about that? Um, you know the on the third film when he's getting into his into his brain. Oh my gosh! The, all the, like, the tools here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, "Mom, don't look, don't look, <laughs> yeah. don't look." I was like, "Okay, they're gonna take a cassette out of his out of his body, just covered in wax. Just don't, <laughs> don't look." Spoiler don't alert. Look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, should say. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the worst was. I got a screener to watch um, the Terrifier two early, right? And I was they wanted me to do a first like film myself watching it and put it on my TikTok, which is a series I used to do. I was watching it downstairs and I was like, oh my God, this is oh, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> then my mom came in from work and she's like, what is, I was like, don't, this, this isn't even the worst part. Like, don't look, don't look. I will turn it off. Like you don't want to see any of these. Yeah. Um, so that's something I'm really looking forward to getting into my house with the with the fiance. I can watch all the twisted things I want without <laughs> the fear of traumatizing my mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah me, me and my friend, we every time there's a new saw film, we go and watch go to the premiere. But we've not done this for the past two, I don't think. But we would the day before do like a marathon, so we'd watch the first one all the way to the end. Oh, it was yeah. a long day, but it was a good day. Yeah, it's it's a it would be a long day, but how yeah. fun! Like. I um, did the same for Scream when the new Scream came out this year. Nice. I was like, okay, we need to have a Scream marathon. But yeah, you got to do that. Just sort of yeah. refresh yourself of what's happened, like what's happening in the law, all that stuff. Like, I, I love a good marathon. Yeah. Especially when you're going to watch like the new film at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, some some cinemas do that, don't they? Where like, because I think it's not horror, obviously, but I watched the last Hobbit film that came out and mm. in the cinema, they had like uh, a marathon. So you'd watch the first two and then at midnight when it premiered, you'd then watch the new one. Oh, that's cool. But, oh, um, wow. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. That's sick. They did something this, was it this? Yeah. This year for Scream where they showed Scream 5 and then 6. Right. Um, was it Scream? No, sorry. It was Scream 6 and then the, no, no, Scream 5 and Scream 6. Oh my gosh, sorry. There's no Scream 7. They did that and then that was really good as well. But yeah. It would be sick if they showed them all in the cinema. That would be, yeah, that would be so right. be a long day, but a good day. Yeah, a long yeah. day, but a very, very good day. Yeah, yeah it would. Yeah. <laughs> so um, any final tips and bits of advice that you'd want to give that we've not kind of covered yet about getting into the world of presenting and, and radio hosting? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it depends on how you work or 
what type of presenting that you want to get into. But I would say as you're a not even establishing yourself, because I wouldn't even say I'm established. I've got so much more things that I want to do and work I want to do. But I would say, because some people get a bit excited and they'll like leave their job and be like, I'm going to do presenting. It's really, really horrible. <laughs> and it's a lot of sleepless nights and long days. But try to do everything alongside your job to start off with. And just to, I'm all, if anyone's listening, I'm always up for talking to people all the time because I'm dyslexic. You will get like a thousand voice notes from me. I'm like, OK, hi. So, da, 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 da. But um, just keep going and keep talking to people because if something comes up somebody might be like oh oh do you remember her or do you remember him or do you remember them or whatever they're really good for this so you you never know so don't underestimate the power of just talking to as many people as possible and your name could be mentioned in rooms that you haven't even entered yet yeah because the thing that's happening with saw i have no idea how that happened i literally don't know i have no idea <laughs> I don't know. It's really cool, but I don't know how it happened. Yeah. Um, and I think, like I said before, if you do want to get into presenting and what the type of presenting that you do want to get into seems a little bit like full of humans, do that tip or do that idea when you just like put whatever it is in a circle and then literally th don't even think about it like presenting. Think of it like word association. Yeah. So horror for example okay so there's how did they make the film there's oh facts about the film I wonder how many ga gallons of blood is in saw there's this there's this like there's loads of different things or questions or things that you want to find out yourself so kind of remove the fact you want to be a presenter and just think about all the things from your said subject that could come off your main subject yeah. because one of them will be something you can incorporate that no one's thought of you know so i'd say that well, uh, thanks very much, Amelia. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story, share your knowledge, and uh, yeah, just, just connect with me today. Before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening, is there anything else you want to say? Anything you want to plug? The floor is yours. Oh my. Um, yes. So I'm on Kerrang Radio for the Kerrang Radio Rock Chart Show every 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. on Saturdays. I know I said that weird, but you know what I mean. I'm on Instagram at Clarks underscore Capers. And then on TikTok, I am Clocks Capers, I think. <laughs> and also on NotFest, um, every Wednesday I do horror content for them as well. So if you want me to cover anything spooky, drop me a DM. And yes, also content does go on my Instagram as well for more spooky things for NotFest. So yeah, anything horror that you want to know, anything spooky, anything music wise, hit me up. Horror Wikipedia, that's what you are. I am a horror yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My brain is very full of horror and music knowledge. It's it's like Libra scale of like yeah. horror, music, horror, music. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Yeah, I'll uh, let you go. Thanks again and uh, speak soon. All right, dude. Cool. Catch you later. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye. And that is it. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you enjoyed this or any other episode of the podcast, then please leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. If you want to support the podcast further, you can go and give it a follow on social media, pick up something from the merch store, or subscribe to the Patreon to get early access to episodes. All the links can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's itsnotaphase.co.uk. Thanks again. Hopefully catch you on the next one. And remember, it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. <laughs>